So we're doing a bit of an interesting video here today. Um, I tend to buy some like Pokemon collectible stuff that is like, you know, like figures and stuff, you know? But it's never like I have a good reason to like show it on camera. And I, you know, every so often I'll like sneak something in there like at the end of a video or whatever. Um, but I have so much crap that's been piling up. I was like, look, I could probably just do a video with all of this. So a majority of this is going to be figures as that has been like the, the kind of focus as of the last little bit. And there's some interesting stories to be had in this video as well, including the places where I bought some of these might not be what you would expect. But anyways, these I found at GameStop while we were out doing a bunch of shopping the other day. And I, I love them. There are multiple of these. I only picked up two. Um, I wish that they had a Squirtle one, as you'll see. That's Bulbasaur there. We have a Charmander in this one. No, they didn't have a Squirtle one. But these things are only about $15. It was actually weird when they rang these things up because this one was actually like 17 something and the other one was like 12 something. But we just have like, this is like a mess to, to open. Like he's just like hanging there. But we have a variety of things to go through here today. Man, these little things are strong. Okay, that sucked to get open. But here we have it. We have the tree. And so it seems like the whole point is that they kind of made some of these a little flat. So you can take, oh no, I still have more things to open. Uh, either of these boys and put them wherever you want or other figures and stuff you might have or other things you might have gotten from this set. Okay, those have now been opened. So we have our Bulbasaur here. Of course, he has copyright info on him. Doesn't seem to show a date on this one though. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty basic Bulbasaur figure. I'd say it's really well detailed and like you don't, it's very seamless. Um, same with our little Applin here. Also just like a super seamless. I hate they put the copyright thing right there. That's annoying. Um, like bottom would make more sense. I guess there's a whole lot of room. But yeah, so you can like put uh, Bulbasaur down there and put Apple, okay, uh, there. Or you can put Apple up top. Do whatever you want. But yeah, I think these things are pretty cool. Uh, they're, I, I'm honestly surprised at the price at being $15. I would honestly expect it to be more because of the Pokemon tax, but it really isn't that bad. Um, for 15 bucks, like these things are kind of like a no brainer if you'd like collect Pokemon crap. There, and now I have a new set piece. Sorry, Squirtle. Oh, I also forgot it came with a piece of paper which might show the others so we can see what all of these exist out there. It doesn't, it's just random figures. Okay. Okay, this one was not nearly as bad to get open. They used a lot less of those tags. But yeah, uh, the only other one they had there had like Minky and there's another like forest like looking one. It is a bit different, but like, I don't know. I feel like this was a better choice as it's more contrasting. You have like a whole different vibe going on this like wasteland here um kind of like a, a craggy environment i think is a good word for it but yeah uh, the piece by itself looks fine it isn't quite as like high detail like you know like some of the pieces like in here and like you know it's very much isn't seamless but when it comes to the actual like figures they send with it at least these are like really good you can definitely see a seam going down the side there yeah we could put that back there and our charmander i don't know here yeah there's our little charmander uh the trap pinch i don't know how to feel about it um it comes with a little let me get it in focus here a little stand which i'm guessing means that he can't stand by himself let's see no he cannot so he has to have that little stand to to stay up it it, it kind of kills it a little bit when nothing else he requires that but I guess it makes sense. He he does have a fat head. By the way, if you're wondering, it's kind of hard to tell where it's just black. That is like fully like cotton cave. You can't have him munch on your flesh. So yeah, if you see these things out in the wild, I definitely think that they're worth it. They're pretty cool little pieces. So I mentioned that some of these things were bought from places you might not expect. Well, I got a fun little story. So we have these books right here. These are like scholastic Pokemon books and it is like mostly book. There is artwork. Like you do have like art pieces. It looks like mostly like edited screenshots from the show for some of them. And just like generic artwork that they definitely have used in like 500 different places. And like, oh, there's art, like a screenshot from the show. So like not super high production when it comes to the artwork here. Um, but you know, the, at least there was work done to like, you know, write text for it. So you can see here on the back, uh, Pokemon book, TH and then $3. That's what I paid for them. I'm also hoping that these stickers are going to come off clean because I'm a little upset that they decided to put stickers on paper. 
So when I said that we were like going like shopping the other day, and that's where some of the things from today's video have come from, uh, we went to, oh man, oh, should I just leave these on the others? Uh, I, I'm gonna do it for now, and you guys can tell me in the comments if you think I should remove them or leave them. Yeah, so these aren't super old. Yeah, 2017, so they're not like, you know, made today, but they're not like ancient or anything either, despite it being like old, like, Pokemon anime stuff going on here. But anyways, we went to basically an antique store. They called it an antique mall. It, it's, it was massive. Like, imagine, like, those antique stores that your grandparents drag you to whenever you have to stay with them for the weekend. Um, but, like, massive. Like, it is ridiculously sized. Because the idea is that there are different booths in there. That TH is actually representing somebody's booth. And so, you're just going around grabbing crap. The prices here were insane. Some of them were shockingly low and I'm assuming that for three dollars I got a good deal on these guys right like you know three dollars is not bad these are a bit older they might have some collector's value so I'm gonna look around on eBay and give you an idea I'll probably already have the one screen for the other one for what I could like find these going for and see if I got like a good deal on these things but the other things that they had in this store have me thinking I did not get a good deal look on screen right here this is an energy that it is a three dollar energy. It's modern as well. Look at the border. That is like Scarlet and Violet. Now, yes, there is a signature in the bottom right. So you'd think, okay, maybe that's like, no, it's not anything special. It's from one of those like champion decks. It, it, it has no value. And they were selling, they had more than one for $3 a piece. This was at a booth where they do like uh, sports cards and that kind of stuff. So I assume that, you know, that person, you know, in the sports industry, a card with a signature on it means like massive money. And so he saw energy card with signature and went, oh, oh, money, money. I don't know what to sell it for. Uh, $3 is fine. But then I'm gonna have another picture on screen. I think it was $20 for empty tins. The, nothing inside of them, just empty Pokemon tins, like 20 bucks. And like, I, I recognize the one tin. It's like the, it was an evolution. I think it was Sylveon. Those are not like, ancient tins. They're not like some old collectible that might be worth $20. It it was a tin. Anyways, yeah, this is the last one of these books that I bought from there. So there were four of these all together, but there was one other one that I wasn't originally going to do because it's not really like part of like the set or whatever, and I don't want to blow too much money at this place, but I didn't really find anything else to buy, so I ended up picking this one up as well. Um, it was also $3. It's larger than the others, but I also think it's a lot more modern. No, actually, it's older, 2016. Interesting. Uh, official Guide to Legendary and Mythical Pokemon. And this one isn't, like, a novel. It's just a thing about, like, legendaries and mythicals, as it says there on the front, and just, like, random information on them. I have a decent amount of, like, Pokemon, like, print media in my collection, and I like adding on to it once in a while. And, uh, I figured these things are a decent ad for, you know, three bucks a pop. Uh, next random thing. We have a Toxel figure. Now, my lady friend does a bunch of artsy stuff, and she's wanting to, uh, make some Pokemon things. She has before, and she wants to make things using the figures. And they're actually going to show one on camera later, but occasionally she'll pick these things up, and this one happened to still be sealed. Um... Let's still pick these things up with the intent to make something with it. So we have this a battle ready battle figure of Toxel. And there it is. And I think it's like the same, yeah, it's the same line as like those. So it's gonna be like the same level of quality where it's relatively seamless. The paint is pretty bad there where it kind of blurs up to its body. That's not the best. And yeah, pretty bad seam on like the legs and stuff there. But it's it's not a bad looking little figure. This part's like a rubbery thing, which I didn't expect. I thought it would be like the same material, but you know. Nice little quality change there. But then we have essentially Pokemon Gunpla. These are Pokemon figures that you have to build. There's usually a good amount of time to build these, but it's not like a ridiculous time, you know? It's not like building, you know, Gundam. Uh, if you can't tell, this one has actually already been done. Uh, let me throw this one back up. We actually built this one a while back. I don't remember when we bought this, but it is made by Bandai, the same people who do Gunpla, so it kind of makes sense. They come in these kind of generic looking boxes, just like all of the, the Gunpla boxes do. But this was the finished result. And so you can tell, like, there's obviously going to be a decent amount of seams and stuff because you had to build it yourself. But it's a bit more fun that way, and I, I don't know, I think it's interesting. Uh, I don't have the patience to do these things. Uh, this is one that I'm pretty sure she built. But yeah, the tail can like kind of flail around and do whatever. It is a massive tail. Like, I feel like it was 
they made it much larger than Mew's tail actually is, but maybe not. I, I do remember his tail was longer than his body. Yeah, it just has like a little actuation. Oh, it also pops out easy, apparently. A little actuation point there. But it comes with this stand for it to sit in, and like, it just doesn't. Like, it, it does not stay well. It is a pain to get it set up. It has like a slot for its tail. So you can get, so you can kind of try to use the tail to stabilize it. It it's a pain. This thing's been on my shelf for a little bit now, and it's just it, it always falls over. Like that is a major downside to this guy. But we actually have not yet built a model kit for Mewtwo, which is just very fitting. You can actually see that this was picked up at Hobby Lobby for $13. So the intention is that, again, I don't usually have patience to build these things. My girlfriend is planning on doing it. So I'm just gonna open it up, kind of take a quick glance at what it looks like inside, maybe give you guys an idea of what it's like to build these things. Yeah, like you you just have like bundles of parts that get assembled together and you have like Mewtwo's like whole head right there. And then you usually have, like you can see here, you got some stickers, right? There's like his eyes, the kind of, you know, actually add some detail to it. But there's a lot of parts that goes into building these things. Like these are just like parts for his hands there. Then you have the actual instruction thing itself. So you can kind of see some of the, the steps here. And if we go around to the front, like there, there there's a decent amount to building these things. So the plan for this video is that uh, my lady friend is going to build this thing. Uh, I'm hoping, and we'll see how it goes, to possibly have her in here and do like a time lapse of it. So if that was done, here it is, or at the very least, here's the figure. Hopefully it's done before this video gets out. Okay, ignore the crappy audio and the like lack of background here. Uh, but yeah, here he is, he is done. She did the build. Uh, yep, pieces can move. You can like position leg and I think tail? Yeah, tail can kind of like go in. Oh, okay, and that can rotate too. Yeah, there, there, there's some moving parts to this guy. But he can't really stand by himself, so it came with this weird crotch holder, and that that's that's how he be. Which does mean you can kind of do some like you know more more actiony things to display him if you would like. I I don't know. But we also actually just picked this one up. We have a third. This is specifically the Garchomp. We paid a bit more for this one. It was from this like collectibles store. Um, they have all kinds of interesting things there, including anime figures that I wouldn't be caught dead with because it's literally just uh, uh, soft core porn. But <laughs> they, they, they had some Pokemon stuff there and figured this would be interesting. So this will be the same deal. Hopefully we can get this built. There might be a time lapse of it. There might not. But there is like the parts for this guard chomp. We have some stickers here. This guy seems to have a lot more going on. I don't know if it's going to be more complicated because a lot of these parts, like look at the size of that. So like, I don't know if this will be more complicated, but there are two bags of parts, so maybe, but most of them seem to be pretty large. So again, if we got this thing built in time for this video to go out, here it is. Now look, it's a Garchomp. She also got this one done. Uh, kind of like the Mewtwo, you got a bunch of moving parts and stuff, uh, including like the, the tail movement, which I think is just funny when you pull it all the way down. He's just kind of like, I don't know, it looks goofy. Uh, I do like the little like attention to detail though. Can we pull the head back? There's like another piece that kind of comes out to like make sure there's not a giant hole there. You can also close his mouth, but when you do that, it is really hard to get that open again. Like it is not an easy task. How do I, yeah, you have to like kind of get that little piece there, then you can open it up. Uh, but yeah, there there be the, the Garchomp. Moving on, this is another one of those things that she bought specifically to make artwork out of. Uh, she has actually already opened this one but we're gonna pull it open anyways. So this is that same line of like battle ready figures. Uh, so they're again, going to be pretty good quality, um, but this is supposed to be like a multi-pack. So I think some of these you could normally buy. I don't even know how that one went in there. Uh, whoops. But like, I think some of these you could possibly buy just like by themselves and uh, like in their own little packages. But now you could get them for a bulk deal. There's that more fitting there in the background. There, Toxel can go there for now. Uh, actually, you probably make more sense over there, little Growlithe. But yeah, it's, I'm not gonna bother trying to take all these things out. The only like big difference here, I'm not, I'm not even gonna try. This Halucha, his arms, oh sorry, uh, his arms can move. So neat, there's like, there's like actuation points. Uh, it seems to be kind of difficult to get him out and I'm not gonna bother trying. But we do have our detailed little Growlithe here. He looks real happy to be here. But I'm sorry, Toxel, you, you just you just don't blend in here. Man, we got a Growlithe up top. I like what's going on back there. So we're talking about how she buys some of these things in order to make artwork out of them. That was what these are for, and one of them was actually used. You may have spotted it in the thumbnail. 
these are little sleeping Pokemon. Now you might notice the quality isn't that great. It's like weirdly glossy on the front of his face and like the paint is just super inconsistent. You don't have like the copyright stuff underneath. Um, yeah, that's because these were a like AliExpress or Wish or Timu, one of those. Um, th these are just like Chinese knockoff figures. So they're not anything official. It is weird that it came with a little Zygarde other than just like starters. But this is what she's doing with them. This was the first one that she made. It is a sleeping little Bulbasaur inside of this ball. Now it might seem like he's a lot larger than the other figures. Um, it, big magnification from ball. Uh, it makes it look a lot larger than it actually is. But yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. It looks like he's actually like under the water. So he's kind of obscured, like, you know, a bit harder to see, you know, clear on because of the water effect going on. And you got like, you know, like a little like, uh, like water bed there, uh, like sea floor. It's, it's neat. And I'd like to see her make more of these. Um, I don't really know how she'll do these ones. I don't know if she has any current plans. But, I mean, you can't say that those, like, cheap, like, AliExpress figures don't have a use case, because, I mean, like, look at this. You can make some cool things out of them. So I don't know if this was ever shown in a video before, but this was a somewhat more, more recent pickup. These are called Nano Bricks. You may have heard of them. And this is another one that's still sealed right here. So once again, if we get this one done in time, there will not be a time lapse of Descendiquil because these things are so tiny and just so precise. The time lapse is, you just be seeing hands the entire time. But if we get this one done, I will show it here. Bam, she got it done. Uh, yes, this was, according to her, the most difficult thing to build. Uh, there's actually another kind of complicated one after this you're gonna see here in a minute. Uh, it, it was kind of a toss up between which one of the two would end up being more difficult. And again, it, it was this. Like you can see all these floating pieces. These do come apart very easy. That's one issue with these little things. Uh, if your goal is to build it and have it set, uh, some of the more fragile pieces, I would say glue is probably a good option. But yeah, there's the Cyndaquil. He looks, you know, real, real nice and blocky. Yeah, I definitely think it looks nice. I think it looks a bit better than the. Uh, then the Snorlax, at least, is like a set piece, mostly because of like the the flame stuff going on. But anyways, yeah, these are just made up of extraordinarily small little bricks, kind of like tiny little Lego. Like what I'm holding right here is two different pieces. Um, I've built these before. If you watch my Yamakon video, um, my girlfriend got some Dragon Ball ones and I did do like a video on that. They, they take so long to build and there are so many steps involved. Like you think, oh, it's just like a tiny little figure. It, it, there is so much, but at least for my impatient brain. But yeah, we got the Cyndaquil here. So hopefully you guys saw that and we have the Snorlax. All right, I think this is the last thing that you have to be able to build uh, because on top of like the Gunpla thing and the Nano Bricks, if you're still not done with just wanting to build your Pokemon stuff, then you still have more options. We have the Mega Constructs, Lucario and uh, Rylou here. I've had this thing for a long while now. I certainly want to say that it's on the top of my priorities. So this one, if I had to guess out of any of them, if anything doesn't get built, it's probably going to be this. It, they, they look weird, like angular, like look, look, look at his nose. Like they look kind of goofy. I've done one or two of these in the past. Um, but you have a bunch of different box, uh, bags here. Uh, so it's not like the Gunpla ones where you have to like pop them out. They're already popped out and they're already like organized in these little bags to try and make it a bit easier. Uh, you also have like a bag to build like that environment that you saw them standing in. And then of course you just have the like instructions along with like advertisement to buy more. But yeah, if I do get this one done, then that'd be neat and you guys can see it. But again, it's not like a super high priority of mine. I've had this thing sh sitting on my shelf for like months now. Bam, here it is. Final, final buildable thing. Uh, yep, yeah, so you have like this kind of just thing for them to stand on. These not quite Lego figures. Uh, what's interesting is that the pants for some reason are made out of rubber. Like this is a rubber piece. So the pants actually came in like their own separate package from the rest of it. Um, which actually I think is because, yeah, you can kind of get some like flexibility there. And that's kind of why they did that. Uh, I guess it's because he's kind of like a taller, more humanoid uh, creature. But yeah, it's interesting. I definitely don't think any of these look that good. Like th these just do not look great. His face looks just kind of stupid. Like if you get the right angle on it, it might look okay, but I don't know. The, these, I think, are, you know, a neat thing for, like, kids to build and stuff like that. 
But as far as the actual, like, quality of this thing on display, it, it looks kind of stupid. <laughs> Okay, we are getting to the end here. Uh, this next one was actually a pickup by my lady friend. She got a good deal on something. And you're probably wondering what the hell this thing has to do with Pokemon. She handed this to me as I like, guess what I bought. And my first thought was like Mega Man, like kind of Mega Man-esque like helmet right there. Cause I, I do love me some Mega Man, but I have no idea. Uh, Burger King logo right there. Uh, then she handed me this, this goes with it. Uh, it is a pretty basic Pokeball, honestly kind of crappy. But when you open it up, you got a little Venusaur there inside. Uh, this was an old, let me see. Yeah, 1999 uh, Burger King toy. And it's just one of those like little launchers. He's got wheels on him. And you just plug this in his butt. And then you can set him down and boom. Yeah, it honestly, like, rolls, like, really fast. It kind of, like, surprised me, and it kind of caught me off guard, but this guy just, like, goes. Oh, man, he took out his son. Why would you do that? But, yeah, it's an interesting little thing. We actually have a decent amount of these, like, old, like, promotional, like, Pokemon things. So, some of these might gain some value. They might already have some by now, but I guess she got, like, an offer for this and got it for, like, a good, a good price. So, this is one that I've definitely seen, and I've seen advertisements for these and other, like, Pokemon products. Uh, it's just the, it's just the ball with, with the Pokemon, um, but we're gonna open it up. Wow, this thing is covered in tape. Holy God. Man, Pokemon Company is still out here making you work to open their crap. Uh, so yeah, we have like a Pokeball. It has like a little latch here because I think it's supposed to like go on your belt, which just makes it look, uh, kind of funny. But yeah, aside from that, it's just a Pokeball. It closes neat. Uh, it's not a really great one, but you got the holes in the bottom and in the top. And then you got a little Dedenny figure with a hole in his butt for some reason. Is there like a thing for him to sit on? No, there just happens to be in a hole a hole in his butt because there can be. Um, is that glue? What? Okay, yep, there was some glue on him. Uh, yeah, horrible, honestly. Like, compared to what we've been seeing all day today, the, the paint job and like the paint quality especially is just not good here. So this one is made by Tommy, which I think that's kind of what they specialize in is not very good cheaper options but there he is there's our kind of dirty looking little didini it, it, honestly if wonderful like you know the fact that it came in the official packaging and i've seen advertisements for him in the past and it has the copyright and stuff on there i would look at this and assume this is like some aliexpress crap but like you can throw him in the ball and close the ball up and hang him from your belt so he can like uh, just get beat up oh and it opens up pretty easy wow that's wild like you can hear it snap shut, but then like, what the hell? You're gonna ask a kid to hang this from their belt. It's probably gonna hang, well, I guess it would, yeah, it'd, it'd probably stoop down a little bit on the belt, right? Especially cause like, you know, it, it, they're kids. It, it might not hang perfectly straight. Like there's a good chance that this thing's gonna get just popped open. And that's a large thing to hang from your belt too. And that's coming from me. I'm a technician. I wear like a large tow belt on my side. And I feel like this would honestly drive me insane is from how much it sticks out. Then we have, Badoof. We got a big old Badoof uh, plushie. We have a decent amount of like Pokemon plush and stuff, but I'm just not a plush person. Uh, I kind of hate how much space plush takes up, especially living in like a small apartment. Uh, so it's never been a big thing for me. It probably never will be, even if I had a large house. Um, but my girlfriend likes them and she picked this one up. Uh, like I said, we don't have a, a, a well, we have a decent amount. We have like a, a large like Corviknight plush and stuff, but it's not a huge priority of mine. But it's Badoof, and I mean, you have to have the Badoof boy. I wonder if they would make a, a shiny Badoof plush. That would make me happy. So we can name him Peanut Butter. I hope that at least some of you guys caught that reference. So this one is interesting. So this is an Evolution multi-pack. So this just comes with the entire like Rowlet line. But my girlfriend is the one who picked this one up and she noticed something when she did. Um. There's a reason why she picked this up. Not only because I, I love this entire Evolution line, and it's like a favorite of mine, so it was like a gift to me. But uh, there's something interesting going on here that I will point out here in a minute. God, I have more of those things out to cut off. Luckily, Rowlet doesn't, or this guy. So I guess we'll just kind of go in a loose order here. So we have our Rowlet. He is just a basic figure. He is where the interesting part is. I doubt any of you guys will have noticed by now. 
but I will show you in a minute. Then we have his evolved form, and his wings are kind of, you know, they can move. They got some, they got some swivel to him. You can make him just put his hands up in the air because he's real excited. He, he, he wants uppies. He wants uppies. <laughs> yeah, it's a fine looking figure. They all got this like weird, like glittery paint being used for him, but yeah, we got our, our, our second second boy there. But then finally, we got the father, and this I didn't expect. Like, this is like a weird, like, rubbery material. I did not expect that. It even does it for, like, his feathers down here. The, I, I honestly expected it to be, like, a solid thing, but no, they move, which is just, I don't know, odd. I don't like how it feels, but it is an interesting thing. Uh, but it has, like, a dart launcher in it, which doesn't feel super necessary, but how do I even... Okay, so it's in. How do I make it go out? Oh, I think I get it. I think you just need to push on the back of it. Yeah, and it shoots. Yeah, even as a kid, I don't think I would have cared for this thing. <laughs> it's not a really great design. Let's see if I can snipe this guy right here. If we can just like... Oh, wow, fired way too high. Come on, I just want to I wanna go dog hunting. We, we, we dog hunting here today. Dang, too high again. Look, you gotta eat, buddy. You're out in the wild. You can't get by without at least eating one dog. Okay, I, I tapped him. Good enough. Good enough for me. Uh, but cool, we have the whole evolution line here, which is, it, it's kind of neat. Like, I don't hate it. It's fine. Um, the wings just feel weird. So, when I'm pointing this thing out, understand, I'm not complaining. I don't think that it's a dumb, stupid thing they shouldn't have done. I just thought it was interesting, and apparently she did too. Uh, these right here are some figures that I've actually shown on camera before way back in the day. These were released for a Christmas thing. It was a bunch of figures and they were done for like a like a Christmas thing. But anyways, they uh, they use that same like glittery paint. And I th that was like the only thing that really made these things seem like a Christmassy thing because they use that glittery paint. That's like the only like special thing aside from like one or two of the figures. Um, these guys use the exact same paint, which just feels odd to me, knowing that I have these things in, like, the, the collection. But then we get to the Rowlet, and <laughs> we already have this guy. It, I, I can't tell the difference, like, aside from the paint, the, the mold, I think they use the exact same mold for this guy. And what I was curious about was, yes, even the copyright info at the bottom, they both say 2018. This was picked up in like a store, like not like some like collectible thing, like it was like a GameStop or a Walmart. And it still has the same 2018 copyright that this much, you know, not really much older, but probably like actually from 2018 thing had. They used the exact same mold to make both of these rallets, but they just put a glittery paint on this and called it a new figure. Like it's, it's, it's a weird thing. I, I just thought, I was really interested to see the copyright info if they actually bothered to update it and nope, exact same mold. I don't know how hard it would be though for them to modify the mold to change the copyright date. So who knows? All right, I'm almost out of recording time, but we only have one thing left. Let's get these things out of frame. If I run out of recording time, I have to spend like an hour transferring files before I can get back to filming. And I don't want to have to do that. This is our last thing. It's a battle pack of my favorite boy. I wanted to save him for last because he's my favorite boy. And now I have to rush it because I took too long to film this video. This has been like 40 minutes in case you're wondering. Uh, there he is, my favorite Absol. I considered leaving him sealed because I, I'm not really a sealed collector, but I also love my Absol. But I don't think it was necessary to keep him sealed, so I didn't, although I might put him back in the box because I'm a nerd. But yeah, this was the last thing. I just love Absol, and I have an Absol collection. And so, of course, even if it's like just a basic figure, I would like to have it. Wow, you can... You can snap Absol's neck. Look at that. You can put his beard back there. I never looked at that thing as a beard, but now that I can move his head, it seems like he just has a beard. Absol's my bearded boy. Like, that's not connected to his chest. It's connected to his neck. Like, he, he's got a beard on him. Anyways, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Like the video. Stuff on the screen to click on. Uh, subscribe down below. All of that. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Hopefully, I'll see y'all next time. Okay, we can calm down now. Uh, yep, I'm back. Video is not done. <laughs> Um, ignore the background changes. I literally just woke up from a nap. I recorded that video and I realized that I forgot the special segment at the end that I'm supposed to do. Uh, went and ate dinner, went and took a nap because I'm super tired, yeah, well, lunch, and uh, here we are. Anyways, bonus card of the day. Uh, this is a segment where I buy uh, cards specifically to go in this segment. I usually don't know what card it's going to be, yada yada. Today, that isn't true. I actually mentioned something at the end of the last video where a very special <laughs> card was shown. And uh, I mentioned that we would be following it up in today's video as something that kind of 
goes along those lines. This is a card that my girlfriend pulled inside of a single pack. This was another pack that she had opened uh, in the same set as four packs that she purchased. And, uh, yeah, this happened. So, <laughs> in the last video, if you've watched it, we pulled the most valuable card from City in Flames, that being Charizard EX. There are four Charizard EXs in that set. This happens to be the second most valuable card in the set, and of course that means it's the second most valuable Charizard. The Golden Charizard EX. It's the, you know, like the three golden stars. So yeah, I can't believe I, like, forgot this, and now I have to add it all in here at the end in a crappy way. I am so tired, I shouldn't be recording right now. Uh, I, after I finished filming, I was working on this stuff, and, uh, it... Uh, experimenting for things to possibly use them all the time in future videos. That's why it looks like that right now, while there's like different figures and stuff here. But thank you guys for watching. I'm assuming that I'm not gonna be able to count the last outro because it was so frantic, but if I was able to cut it out, uh, like the video, subscribe, all of that. Uh, goodbye for now.